Welcome to the Association of Independent Maryland and DC Schools College Fair. My name is Jasmine. I'm going to serve as the facilitator for our session today. We have some fantastic schools with us here today. Each school will have six minutes to present to share information about their institution. Before we get started, I have a few housekeeping announcements. The first announcement, your camera and microphone are off. So our presenters are unable to see or hear you. Second announcement, you can use the Q&A feature in Zoom to type your questions to our presenters at any point throughout our sessions today. Third announcement, this is just one of a few different sessions we're offering. So feel free to visit our registration site to sign up for additional sessions. And finally, this presentation is being recorded and you can access that recording by visiting strivescan.com slash AIMS. With all of that said, I wanna go ahead and turn it over to our first presenter from the University of San Francisco. All right, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for being on yet another Zoom. My name is John Rice, my pronouns are he, him, his, and I serve as the Director of Admission and the Maryland DC Virginia representative for the University of San Francisco in San Francisco, California. I'm super excited to start with y'all because beyond being representative, I grew up in Bethesda, Maryland, and then I made my way across the country. So for those of you thinking about keeping your options open, um, this is an amazing choice and it can really change your life as it did for me. Uh, and the reality is in six minutes, there's no way we're going to cover everything about every college. And I know we all try to cover so much. So I just want to cover three things to think about USF and my college as you consider the different options out there. So the University of San Francisco, I would start with the size. We are a medium-sized institution. We have just over 6,500 students. Um, I start with that size because colleges come in all shapes and sizes. You have really, really big schools, really small schools. I love that community because it's small enough that it feels like a community. It's large enough that you have privacy. Um, the other reason I say that is that the people that you're with over the course of your next four years, they really define your experience. And the University of San Francisco is the most ethnically diverse college campus in the United States. There's no racial majority, no ethnic majority. Students come from all 50 states, DC, um, 98 countries. And you can see with this years entering class, um, a real variety of backgrounds. So our goal is that we want the campus to kind of look like our country and look like our world. And it means that regardless of your background, you're gonna find representation on the campus and find it to be a, a welcoming place. So as much as we'll talk about the location in a moment, I always say you should think about the people you're with over those four years. Uh, they certainly define the experience and our students, I think, define the institution. Um, the second thing you should know about USF is of course that we're in San Francisco. San Francisco, I would argue, is one of the best cities in the world to go to college. And I'm not just saying that because I work at USF. Um, I think it's amazing for a couple of reasons. First is that it's actually pretty small. So on your screen in front of you, you can see the city of San Francisco. The left-hand side is the Pacific Ocean. The right-hand side is the Bay in Bay Area. USF sits in the exact center. And from left to right, from west to east, that's just seven miles across. So we're three and a half miles to downtown, three and a half miles to the ocean. We give every student unlimited public transit as part of the tuition at USF. That means you're 20 minutes to downtown, 20 minutes to the ocean, no more than about an hour anywhere in the city, and 25 minutes to SFO where there are direct flights to DCA, BWI, and Dulles. So really easy to explore. But the reason I think it's amazing is if there's something you're interested in, you're probably going to find it in San Francisco because of the variety of industries represented here. So whether that's the arts like Pixar or tech companies or finance, you're gonna find it in the city of San Francisco. At the same time, USF is a 55 acre campus. So you really get that more traditional college campus feel uh, while you're at the university. And we do give every student a minimum of two years of on-campus housing. So two years you live in one of our beautiful residence halls, you really build that community. And then in your junior year, most of our students do move off campus. We have a team that helps you make that transition. Um, so you get the experience of both living in a residence hall and living in the city. And the last thing is the academics. And I save that for last because the reality is every college year from tonight is gonna to be fantastic. It's more about thinking, how do you learn best? And what academic experience do you want? Uh, the University of San Francisco has five schools and colleges, about 70 majors. And importantly, we don't make you choose your major to the end of your sophomore year. So there's a lot of flexibility there. 
What I would say that makes our academics stand out is that we are a Jesuit Catholic institution. Um, there are 27 Jesuit institutions. I believe there are two represented here tonight. Uh, and what you'll find at Jesuit schools is an emphasis on social justice and service. So we don't expect you to be Catholic. I am not Catholic, but we do expect you to think about how are you gonna use your education to lift up others and make a difference in the community. Uh, the reality is that only about 5% of the world has a college degree. And so at USF, we're constantly gonna be asking you in your classes, how are you using your education to make a difference in the lives of others? How are you gonna use your education to change the world uh, and, and really think about making an impact? A huge part of that with the education is preparing you for a career and preparing you to do what you wanna do next. As much as we're talking about college, the reality is that this is not the glass ceiling you're trying to break through. This is the floor. Getting a college degree is to set you up for everything else you want to do in your life. And so the education at the university is very focused on developing and asking these big questions, but also having you think about how am I going to use my education to get where I want to be later on? And so you can see we have some incredible companies we work with. Uh, and majority of our students are doing at least two internships before they graduate. So we're really taking advantage of everything that the city has to offer. So as you think about your college process, I encourage you to think broadly. And if you want to be at a university that values diversity, that values a variety of people in the classroom, values different experiences, that cares about social justice, making a difference in the lives of others, doing well for yourself and doing well for others, then USF could be a really great place for you. Um, to finish out, I'm going to leave my contact information because I know making that decision to even think about applying or even looking at a school on the West Coast coming from the DMV can be a really big decision, and I did it. So that's my email, uh, and that's my phone. I would love to stay in touch with you as you work through this process and consider uh, coming to the West Coast or considering even Jesuit education and what that means if you have questions about it. Um, I'll throw my last thing before I get out of here. Give us a follow on Instagram and TikTok. We know you're sick of being on Zoom. It's a great way to stay in touch and learn about the colleges out there. And I hope you all have an amazing search. You're, uh, you're on to an awesome journey. Uh, thank you so much. And I'll turn it back to the uh, host. Thank you, John. Our next presenter is from Fordham University. Hello, everyone. And John, that was fantastic. I, I hope that I can uh, do a fellow Jesuit university proud. Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much today for taking the time to chat with us. My name is Sebastian Vasquez Amaro, and I am your Fordham University representative. And so I uh, lead the application review for our students from West Virginia, DC, Maryland, and Virginia. And today I am lucky enough to share with you some time to talk to you about Fordham. And again, <clears throat> six minutes will not be enough time for us to get fully acquainted with each other. But again, I want to take that start. Now, what I want to make sure you leave with today is knowing that Fordham University is the Jesuit University of New York. And knowing that uh, students who are in the DMV uh, wanting to make that step uh, east over to New York City, uh, Fordham is an option for you to go ahead and uh, spread your wings. Now, what do I want to, you to take away from the session today is that Fordham has two campuses where you can have a full four year undergraduate experience. What does that mean? And what does that look like at Fordham? And so for us, that means you can live in either our Rose Hill campus in the Bronx, or our Lincoln Center campus in Manhattan. And I'm going to take a second or two to describe what both of those campuses are and how they relate to each other so uh, you have a better sense. Now, our Rose Hill campus in the Bronx is uh, our 88 acre rolling hills, trees, a ton of deer, some cute little black squirrels, Gothic architecture that makes up uh, really what we've been normed into understanding as the quintessential college experience. You have the huge lawn, our Eddie's Plaza, you have a historic buildings that have been around for over a hundred years, and you have the sense of a campus that is really profound for our Fordham campus. Now at Fordham Rose Hill, what I want you to understand is that that's where we have our athletic fields, that's where we have uh, our state-of-the-art labs for our students who are a little bit more STEM oriented, looking for a little bit more of those hard sciences, they're going to find their home over at Rose Hill. Now, Lincoln Center. Lincoln Center is eight acres of cityscape. So when you visit Lincoln Center, you're going to tilt your head up because the campus is upwards. And so at the Lincoln Center campus, we are in the Upper West Side of Manhattan. 
And so you can live on either campus all four years of your undergraduate experience. At Lincoln Center, we have two residence halls, one for our first year students, that is floors 11 through 22 on top of our law school. And we have a, a upperclassmen residence hall that is solely dedicated to our upperclassmen living. You're guaranteed housing for four years in New York City on either campus and know that what that means for you is that you don't have to uh, you don't have to make the decision to live off campus unless it's right for you unless that's something financially responsible for you and your family now at lincoln center what are some things that are pretty unique and special now that's where we have our bfa programs in theater and dance and you'll find that at lincoln center we have a bit more of those arts programs uh, for our students to dip their toes into and get involved with now fordham has two campuses three colleges all right and so those three colleges are Fordham College at Rose Hill, Fordham College at Lincoln Center, and our Gabelli School of Business, having programs at either campus. When you hear Fordham College, think to yourself, okay, this is Fordham's liberal arts and sciences school. This is where I can study anything from political science to anthropology, sociology, physics, biology, et cetera. And note that we have Fordham College at either campus. So you could be a political science major at Rose Hill or a political science major at Lincoln Center. What that means for you is that in the common application process and in finding where your next home is going to be, you can go ahead and decide, all right, I'm thinking that I want to be on a more residential campus, or I feel that I might want to be right in the heart of the city. And that might be an experience that might be more of a calling to you. Now, here at Fordham, we have over 70 plus majors and minors. And a majority, uh, a big percentage, 11% of our students are coming in as undecided. Note that uh, opportunities for undergraduate research, over 80% of our students are completing at least one internship before they graduate. And around half of our student body is studying abroad each year. Note that for us, getting involved looks different in different ways. Again, we have two campuses that interact with each other based on how you want that interaction to be. You're admitted to one campus and one college, but remember that uh, we have our RAM van, our intercampus shuttle that'll take you to and from either campus. If you're taking a class at the other campus, if you are taking a student organization event at the other campus, and that's door to door service between our two campuses. Uh, anytime that's not rush hour, you'll be getting there within 35, 40 minutes. If it is rush hour, you know us and uh, every big shot in the Lower East Side is gonna be having a, a long commute at 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. We have 21 Division I sports teams. And I also want to add a piece on our Jesuit education, being that uh, coming to Fordham, we wanna make sure that uh, you're engaging with your coursework, knowing that the point is for you to be bothered and for us to really culture that mindset for you as you continue on in your education. with uh, pieces of principle known as cura personalis, care for the whole person, magis, more, wanting more, and hominis pro alis, having an understanding for and a development for people as, uh, as themselves and growing in their, in their own knowledge and development. Now, I want to go ahead and quickly point out that we are a test optional institution. This is a, going to be our second cycle now that we have just completed with our test optional a uh, policy, what that means at Fordham is that uh, you do not have to submit test scores to be reviewed whatsoever and you are not disadvantaged um, in the process because of that. So make sure that you, again, think what is the best way for me to find my next home, shape my application to be the best that it can be. And with that, I think I am coming to time and I'll go ahead and put my email in the chat towards the end so you can ask me any other questions you have and uh, I'll send it right back to you, Jasmine. Thank you, Sebastian. Our next presenter is from DePaul University. Hi, everyone. It's, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me. I'll go ahead and share my screen. My name is Jesse Heinrich. I am an assistant director in the Office of Admission at DePaul. And similar to John, I grew up in Maryland myself and have, have made my way out here to um, Chicago. So if you ever have any questions about what moving that far away is, is like, I'm, I'm a good person to talk to. 
also, also similar to um, John and Sebastian in San Francisco and Fordham, DePaul is also a Catholic university, although not Jesuit. We, we are part of the Vincentian tradition, St. Vincent de Paul, whose face you see on the residence hall on the slide here um, is the university's namesake. And that commitment to community service and social justice is very, very much the same here at DePaul. Also similarly to, to Fordham, DePaul has two main campuses. So when you apply to the university, you don't apply to one campus or the other, but your major specific coursework will take place on the campus where that major is housed. And this, this photograph that you see on the screen here does a really great job of, of displaying the differences between our two campuses. So in the foreground of this picture, you're seeing our Lincoln Park campus. And it's a, a young, fun city neighborhood, but you're in a bit of a more residential area. So you get about one square mile of DePaul only space and that more traditional campus feel. Plenty of space for athletic fields, as you see here, residence halls, academic buildings, libraries, student center, fitness center, dining halls, all of that good stuff. Um, you can also see in this photo that the Fullerton train stop is on the doorstep of our Lincoln Park campus, and there are several train stops on the doorstep of our Loop campus as well. And you see the Loop, which is the main business district, tourist district of the city of Chicago in the background of this picture here. And the Loop campus offers a very urban student experience. All of the DePaul spaces on the Loop campus are housed in about five skyrise buildings on about one square block. So I sometimes call the Loop campus our vertical campus because all the spaces there um, are really upward rather than, than spread out as they are on the Lincoln Park campus. It's about five train stops between the two campuses. So a 10, 15 minute train ride, we give you a train pass included in your cost of tuition that is good for unlimited rides 24 seven. And the city really is very accessible by public transportation. I have not owned a car the entire time that I've lived in Chicago and have no problem getting where I need to go. So it, it really is quite easy for our students to get back and forth between the two campuses, but also anywhere else they'd like to go in the city. The college or the Lincoln Park campus is home to our College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences, our College of Science and Health, our College of Education, and our theater and music schools and those business and business related programs are located on the Loop campus, including the Treehouse College of Business, the College of Communication, and our College of Computing and Digital Media. Across those eight undergraduate academic colleges, we have over 130 bachelor's degree offerings. And really regardless of major, you're going to see a very small class size. The student to faculty ratio at DePaul is 15 to one, so your average class size is around 20, 25 students. You'll never sit in a 100, 200 person lecture hall at DePaul, although we are a very large school by overall student population. We have just over 22,000 total students, around 15,000 undergraduate students, and that makes DePaul the largest Catholic university in the country. You can see some of the majors that we are most well known for on the screen here and also a breakdown of, of where our students are coming from, which is really all over the country and all over the world. There are also tons of ways to get involved on campus through our many student organizations and, our, and, and lots of ways to celebrate your school spirit with our 13 um, Division I athletic teams competing in the Big East Conference. And lastly, I'll just make a quick note of our application process before I, I pass it over to the next presenter. DePaul uses the common application exclusively and we have no application fee, so it doesn't cost you anything to apply. We are also test optional and have been test optional for 10 years long before the pandemic. So that's been a longstanding admissions philosophy at the university. We know that your performance in your high school coursework is, is the best indicator of your success here at DePaul. If you have any questions about the application process or about DePaul in general, or you'd like to come out and visit, I would love to hear from you. You can always reach me. Um, I'll share my contact information in the chat. I am the admission representative for 
the DMV, DC, Maryland, Virginia. So um, I'm always happy to chat and thank you for sharing your time with me this evening. Thank you, Jesse. Our next presenter is from the American University of Paris. Hey, hi everybody. My name is Mary Catherine Knoll. I am the Assistant Director of Admissions for AUP. Let me just get up my presentation real quick. Okay, there we go. So I'm just going to tell you a little bit about AUP real quick and how you can come and study with us in Paris. Uh, there we go. Okay, there we go. So a little bit about AUP. We are a small university with about 1,100 students on campus each year, with about 1,000 of those being undergraduate students. We are a very international school. I would say not really American or French in our culture, but we're very international. We're very proud of that. We have students that come from 103 different nationalities. We have 65 languages that are spoken on campus. And a lot of our students do hold multiple passports. You'll also see in the classroom, our faculty is equally as diverse as our student body. So from the start, you're going to have that international experience, learning how to interact and work with different cultures. And of course, a really fun benefit of that is having friends that live all over the world when you graduate. In the classroom, we have a couple of different, or a lot of different majors that you can choose from. I would say AUP is pretty much a liberal arts university, plus a couple others, it's not strictly just the liberal arts, but I'll break that down into four different sections so we can see the different majors that we offer. Happy to go into those a little bit more in depth when we have more time, but these are our arts and communications majors that we offer at AUP. On this slide, we have economics and management majors, so different business type majors you'll find into this area computer science and psychology majors. I would definitely say psychology is probably one of our biggest and most popular programs at AUP and computer science as well has been growing a lot in the last couple of years. And then our final section is the history and politics majors. So we have these different major offerings there. One of the really cool things about AUP and our curriculum with it being liberal arts based is we offer a lot of flexibility in the courses that you take. We encourage students to take different courses that maybe aren't in their specific degree plan that they think are gonna benefit them along their career path. So we know that each student is gonna have a different plan for what they do when they graduate. And we wanna encourage you to take courses that are gonna benefit you and what you want to do. So you have that experience when you go into the workforce and you're a very marketable employee when you're interviewing for those first time jobs straight out of college. Another thing we really like to encourage um, our students to do is take advantage of not just Paris as a classroom, but the world as a classroom. So we offer different study trips and excursions that you can take with our faculty. Um, our study trips are gonna be a little bit smaller, maybe like a day trip to go do chocolate tasting or something fun like that, like a museum visit in the Paris area. And then our study trips are gonna be a little bit longer, usually on a weekend. They'll be faculty led and planned around a specific subject. So maybe you're studying international business Business and you go somewhere for the weekend to get a little bit more in depth, do some on-site visits and have that faculty member lead you along that program so you can have that experience a little bit more in depth than you would actually have in the classroom. We also offer internships. This is going to be through one of our on-campus offices. So you'll see we have a very similar structure to other U.S. universities that we offer these services on campus, like our um, Office of Career Services that can help you send out your resume, but also browse different openings in the Paris area for different internships. This list here isn't everywhere that our students intern, it's just a couple of places that they've interned at recently, broken down by their subject area. 
And then of course, our campus area, we are located in the 7th RD small or neighborhood, which is a very central neighborhood in Paris. As you can see, we have the Eiffel Tower right there. And then our campus buildings are marked out here. We are an urban campus. So I do encourage students that are interested in coming to AUP that you feel comfortable living in an urban environment. Um, we're not gonna be a closed campus like you might see in other places. So you should feel comfortable living in a large city. I think it's a huge benefit though, because you really get to immerse yourself in Parisian culture, um, having those, you know, walking from class to class, having the different bakeries, everything like that in your day-to-day -day life. These are just a couple of pictures of our campus area. So you can see our students taking advantage of everything that's within the seventh. Um, and of course, we are very close to the Seine as well. So we have a lot of our students that will go down there on their lunch break, have a picnic, enjoy just the beautiful area that is the seventh or small. For housing, so we do offer AUP housing, and actually for first-year students, you'd be required to live in AUP housing. You make it a lot easier to come over and have that set up. Um, let's see, I have my time coming up, so I'll just kind of go over to the next couple of things. We're on the common application. This is about financial aid and scholarships, but let me get you my contact information. So if you have any questions for me, you can reach out to that email right there and I'd be happy to answer anything. I'll pass it on to the next person now. Thank you, Mary Catherine. Our next presenter is from SMU, Southern Methodist University. Hi everyone, my name is Abby Fister Story. I'm one of the Associate Directors of Undergraduate Admissions at SMU or Southern Methodist University. I'm going to continue the trend of having some connections to your region. Um, I'm originally from York, Pennsylvania, and so I know exactly what it's like when you're considering a place that's maybe a little bit further. Um, the great thing is it's really easy to get to us. We're right about two and a half hours um, direct flights. We have two airports that serve the city of Dallas, and we know for a lot of families, um, they may not know a lot about that. Dallas, um, because most of the time you come through our city to get to your vacation, you don't really take a vacation to Dallas. And so um, we really want to talk tonight more about the opportunities that our medium-sized university um, at 6,700 undergraduate students can provide you um, with a world-class experiences both on our campus as well as the city of Dallas. Um, so the city of Dallas itself um, is a major metropolitan area where top 10 media market, number two number of headquarters, publicly traded on the New York Stock Exchange, and the largest urban arts district in the country. And so our students are able to take full advantage of that. But what the great thing is, is you have the balance of a college experience on our campus and have world-class experiences, but you also get those world-class experiences. And we are the only major university in our city, which is quite different to a lot of schools that are in a city. Um, if you're looking for something different, um, the we want to make sure that we are reflecting our city in our students' um, experience in their classroom. So about 60% of our students do come from outside the state of Texas. Um, we're right about um, 30 to 35 percent students of color, 8 percent international, and right about 50-50 even split with male students that self-identify as male or female. Um, and so we really want to make sure with our average class sizes being in about the mid-20s, we want to ensure that you get that well-balanced um, perspective of all different types of students around um, those classroom tables. A lot of those times, my students that are coming from the Baltimore area have questions about our middle name. What's a Methodist education? And the great thing about it is that you learn more about yourself when you learn from others. And that's why we really make sure that we have a really robust um, student experience while you're here on our campus. Um, we are a comprehensive liberal arts university. And so some surprising majors that you may not know that we have is a human rights program, a robust um, opportunities with engineering, and then a sports management program. I actually had one of my students, um, now they currently work for the Ravens. Um, and so our sports management program is up and coming, but we also have a robust um, business program that a lot of students are um, interested in, um, since we are a nationally ranked business program in a city known for business. And then we have a very robust communication arts area, as well as performing arts. So if you are that artist, and that you're trying to be maybe what we like to call smartest, we're going to be able to provide you with those opportunities. 
but not only academics, we're also going to be able to provide you a well-balanced student experience. Um, we do require our students to live on campus your first and second year um, in a robust um, residential commons model. But what's unique about our program is we're going to have faculty that you live on um, our campus in our residential experience as well. And then you have the ability to work um, on leadership development early on in your academic career. But one of our biggest pride points is the return on the investment. Um, because our students are able to have these world-class experiences, they're able to couple them with world-class um, opportunities. And because of that, our students are really well prepared um, for life after graduation. We're preparing our students not just for their first job, but also their last job, and hopefully to navigate uncertainty and adversity that happens in those kinds of periods because of our comprehensive liberal arts university. We've done a wonderful job um, of preparing our students for those types of opportunities. And because of the network that we have both nationally and internationally, our students are able to take full advantage of that. And that's why on the day of graduation, three out of four of our students are already off the job market. And so by the time you take that out to six months, then we're closer to 80 to 90% of our students um, that are ready to be, um, to be prepared for life after college. And so um, as I wrap up, like we've all been saying, six minutes is so hard um, for us to tell you about our campus. Um, we are and have been welcoming visitors since June of 2020. So if you do find yourself in the North Texas area, please stop by our office or parents that are listening. If you happen to be in your area because of business and they wanna be the first one to just check us out, come on by. Um, my contact information is on the main screen and um, I will turn it back um, to our host. Thank you, Abby. Our next presenter is from Tulane University. Y'all, well, thanks for having me. Uh, happy to follow up this great group of schools. Uh, Tulane is not a Jesuit or Christian affiliated university. We're not affiliated, but it is a funny coincidence because we are right next door to Loyola, New Orleans, which is a Jesuit school. So we all got something in common. Um, Tulane, we're in New Orleans. As you probably know, New Orleans, Louisiana, about a two and a half hour flight direct from BWI. Um, <clears throat> New Tulane is made up of five undergraduate schools, business, science and engineering, liberal arts, architecture, and the very popular School of Public Health. If, I, if you remember one thing from the next six minutes, I want you to remember that when you apply to Tulane, you are not applying to one of those five schools, you are not applying to one major, you're applying to Tulane, and if you get in, you get into all five schools. You can have access to any major. That's one of our biggest perks, the academic flexibility. Uh, you're able to do two majors in one school, do a double major, that's what I did. I have a marketing and management double major in the business school. You could also do a dual degree in two of our schools. Uh, one of our student workers, Kennedy, is doing a BS in neuroscience and a BA in dance, for example. Uh, so very flexible. You don't have to declare till the end of your second year. You don't have to do any paperwork if you change majors. So like very user friendly. Uh, size wise, we're a medium sized school. We're around 8,000 this year. We over enrolled last year. We had about 2,000 freshmen in our class. So uh, a little bit larger than we're used to, but uh, very much a medium-sized campus allows us to offer an average class size around 21 or so and a student faculty ratio of eight to one. So you're in a pretty intimate academic environment. I know many of y'all go to independent schools. So if you're coming from a school that you've had this small community your whole life, it's great because it feels different socially, but academically you're able to have a similar classroom experience. Uh, we're a research university, as I may have mentioned, uh, so we're getting almost $200 million a year coming in in funding. We're classified as an R1 institution by Carnegie, which essentially puts us in the top 2% of schools nationally. Uh, we Here's a couple shots of our campus. We have a beautiful three quarter of a mile long campus in uptown New Orleans, so about 15 minutes from Bourbon Street. So parents, you don't need to worry about your kid going there every weekend. Um, our campus, it feels like a college town. It's a very closed off campus in a beautiful like residential neighborhood with a lot of local restaurants and shops, but we're about 15 minutes from downtown. So you get kind of the best of both worlds there. Uh, we're known for our student life, a lot of engaged students, a lot going on on our campus. 
back when the Princeton Review did numerical rankings, we were also always known for our service engagement, for our happy students, and being in a wonderful college city. <clears throat> the students at Tulane are very engaged. They're coming from all over the world to come to Tulane, uh, all 50 states, over 50 countries, and becoming much more of a diverse institution as well. Uh, we're probably the least diverse school on this panel, to be honest with you, but uh, me working here for the past eight years, been on campus for 12 years, it's been encouraging to see uh, how we've worked to make a Tulane a more equitable type of campus, a lot more resources. So if that's important to you, please feel free to email me and uh, I can walk you through more of those resources. Uh, so New Orleans is a tremendous place to go to school. As I mentioned, we are not close to Jackson Square, that bottom left, we're not close to the French Quarter, but we're close enough that it's accessible when there's something fun going on. Uh, New Orleans, obviously we're known for Mardi Gras, that was uh, about a month ago or so, but New Orleans has about 130 festivals a year. Louisiana has about 400. So for me, uh, similar to many of my peers on this panel, living in a real city is so perfect for college because you're not just in the middle of nowhere with nothing to do. You have access to internships. You have these amazing cultural things going on and you still have division one sports, fraternities, sororities, club sports, all the normal college stuff. But you get that in addition to living in one of the most interesting cities in the world. Uh, the food here is tremendous. I mentioned those festivals. For example, in the fall, there's always fried chicken festival, mac and cheese festival, regular cheese festival, po' boy festival. It is a heck of a lot of fun living here. Every weekend is different. And it's kind of funny because as a student, having so much going on around you is almost less distracting because when you have an exam coming up on a Monday, you have to stay in all weekend. It's not a big deal to stay in the library all day Saturday, all day Sunday, because you can go see a concert Monday after your exam's over. Uh, it's not like you're living in the middle of nowhere where you miss the jamboree and then there's nothing to do for the rest of the month. Uh, living in a big city is, uh, is incredible and New Orleans is, is so much fun. The students are very passionate. I, I blew through that slide, but it really is just such an active and warm campus. The thing I love the most coming from Montgomery County, I went to Whitman, if any of you have friends there, it was so toxically competitive. And I, I feel like Tulane is much more collaborative, much more warm, and uh, I know the other panelists from Maryland, you can probably agree, like it, it really is a, a breath of fresh air coming to a school where it feels like people are a lot less concerned about what your grades are. And they'd prefer that we all work together and support each other as you go for those internships and whatnot. When it comes to applying to Tulane, uh, we have three different deadlines, early decision, early action, regular decision. Uh, I'd strongly encourage you to apply early with one of our early options. Regular for us is very, very, very competitive. So I would avoid it. Uh, we are getting a new dean of admission next year so some things might change but that's my advice we haven't officially made the decision on if we'll be test optional next year but i'd be shocked if we require tests uh, these past two years have been great half of our current freshman class was test optional and it's looking like 53 ish percent will be test optional this coming fall if there's one more tip i can give you consider uh engaging with tulane virtual events seeing me if i come to baltimore in the fall coming to campus if that's in your budget but don't feel like you have to. For Tulane, in order to get in, you do need to show some interest, but physically visiting New Orleans is not required. You can always follow us on social, check the mailing list, do our events. I'm out of time, but I appreciate you being here and I hope to see y'all uh, in the future. And I'll put my email in the chat as well. Thank you, Owen. So that concludes the presentation portion of our session today. We're now gonna transition to the Q&A. I want to encourage all of our presenters to return. Feel free to turn your camera on and I will pose a question to the group. Our presenters will respond to the question in the order in which they present it. The question is, what's one thing you want students to remember about your school? I think for me, it's the diversity of the institution. Um, coming from Montgomery County, coming from there that I was where it was so homogenous, being in a place that's going to expose you to different perspectives, different people, different life experiences, that's gonna change the way you view the world and it's gonna impact the rest of your career and your life as well. So um, if there's one thing I'd, I'd say to stand about USF, it's the people and the diversity of the institution. Hi everyone. Uh, if there's one thing about Fordham that I want everyone to remember is that uh, mm, trying to find 
just one, but I want to say that uh, we have an undergraduate class size of around 10,000, around 6,500 over at Rose Hill and around 3,000 over at Lincoln Center. And know that as a medium-sized institution, you will never have a lecture hall as a part of your uh, learning experience. Our average class size is around 23 students. And so uh, that in and of itself is just something that uh, students looking for looking for undergraduate experiences. Uh, for me, I, uh, I definitely uh, experienced the lecture hall life. So I wanna make sure to impart that on you as you uh, continue your search. Hi, everyone. Um, I would say that I would want you all to remember that for DePaul students, um, the city of Chicago really is your campus. We're so immersed in the city, not only physically um, and literally, but also just based on the community connections that we have and, and the reputation that DePaul has within the city. And I've really seen that hugely impact the, the success that our students find. Just one other thing that I would mention, I, I kind of touched on the Vincentian mission when I was talking earlier, um, but my personal favorite part of the Vincentian mission at DePaul is the, the personalism. There's a concept um, that, we, that we celebrate called Vincentian personalism, and it's really all about um, care for human dignity and holistically caring for our community. And um, I think DePaul does a really good job of, of actually walking that walk and not just talking that talk. For AUP, I would say, just to remember that we're more than our location. Obviously I get a lot of people that are really excited about Paris and it is an amazing city. But the school itself offers a lot of great opportunities from the small class sizes to study trips, the hands-on learning environment, getting to know your professors and the other students in your class, um, the different clubs and organizations. All of those things are items that you should be looking for in a school anyway. So I don't want you just to be caught by Paris and the romantic view of it, um, actually look at what the school has to offer because there's a lot of great things there as well. And I think the one thing I want you to remember from SMU is opportunities. Um, the opportunities that our students have on our campus as well as our city um, and being the only premier university in the city of Dallas, all those opportunities are there um, for your taking which helps having a collaborative um, nature um, so hopefully we'll, we'll see you on campus soon. Uh, for Tulane, I'd have to say fried chicken festival easily, um, but no, uh, academic flexibility, less cutthroat environment, and being accessible to New Orleans, but still having uh, a closed, normal, traditional campus. All right, thank you all for sharing. So we are approaching the end of our virtual college fair. But I have a few closing announcements. As you exit from this Zoom session, a survey will appear. It's approximately five questions or so, but please, please complete the survey. It's extremely helpful as we aim to improve our virtual college fair offerings in the future. I also want to remind you to visit our registration site to sign up for additional sessions. And finally, you can access this recording by visiting strivescan.com slash AIMS. I wanna thank all of our presenters for joining me, but also thank you to all of our attendees. I hope everyone has a great day. Thank you.